standing during the three weeks, the three weeks that go from Shiva Asar Betamos to the ninth of Av, the three weeks during, what happened during these weeks? Do you remember? He's getting destroyed. Right, he's getting destroyed. So we're told that it was Sinat Chinam, hatred for no reason that caused the Bet Amikas to get destroyed. It is Ahavat Chinam, yes, Hadassah. Yeah. Oh, in the soon, darling. Let's take the comment at the end, okay? It's Avat Chinam, love for no reason, that's going to bring about Mashiach. And one of the ways, children, that we show love for one another is when we give from ourselves. What does giving from ourselves mean? Giving from ourselves means giving. We do this with for every day. Yeah. I don't have it. Can you hear me? Oh, here it is. Giving what, children? Sadaka, children. The tremendous mitzvah of taking from money that we earned, that we owed, that we worked hard to get and saying, you know what? I'm going to take from it and use it to share with others. Abital, thank you for sitting so nicely. I really appreciate it. Rivka Azizi, excellent. Thank you. Good job. I really appreciate it. Esti, thank you. Good job. Okay, thank you. So... This story is about the power of tzedakah. There was once, children, a Jewish chassid. Let's call him, I don't have his name, so you want to give me a Jewish name? Raise your hand if you want to give him a name. Esti, what name should we call him? Yeah. Moshe. Moshe, oh, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Moshe. I work very well with metals. I have a business that creates all different kinds of things from metals. I create pots and pans and scissors and anything you kind of need to be made out of metals. I lived many years ago in the land of Russia. Children in Russia, it's a big government and they had a big, big Luna. army. Now children, when you have a big army with lots of soldiers, you obviously have to feed them they need to eat and if you need to feed them you need to cook a lot and you need to have very many different pots and sizes of pots and pans in order to make sure that all the soldiers are well fed now there was different people who wanted to get the job of being the ones to provide the government the army the russian army with their pots and there were these two companies that were owned by non-Jews, two brothers. We'll call them Ivan and Stefan. And Ivan and Stefan went to the government and said, Ah, oh, we want to be the ones to sell to you the pots for the government. Yes, you've got a new platoon, all different platoons all over Russia. And um, we know you need a lot of pots and pans. So we saw that you were looking for a company to make your pots and pans. We can make very good pots and pans. And the government officials said, well, we're going to find out and look and see how we have to check different companies. Okay, let's see. And they started to check around and they went to the officials in the cities where Ivan and Stefan lived. And they were told, ah, oh, don't go with them. They're all the time stealing and cheating. I would recommend you go with Moshe's company. He makes far better quality. I bought my wife pots and pans from him. And he did really well. And uh, you do much better buying from the Jew, not from Stefan. Darling, sweetie pie, if you don't want to listen to the story, you're welcome to go, go with the little kids. Do you want to go with them, darling? I don't want to. Okay, so you have to go out with the little kids, darling, okay? Because in here it's disturbing, sweetie, okay? So you choose, choose. If you want to be in here, you need to sit quietly. If you, if you don't want to be quiet, then you need to go where the younger kids are. Do you want to join them, darling? No? Okay, so then you need to be quiet. Thank you. So he said, all right, I'm going to go check out Moshe's company. And he comes to Moshe the Jew, and he checks out the pots and pans, and he takes one of the pots that he makes, and he tests it on the fire and the official says yep we're gonna go with Moshe's company the pots that he made are really strong that's great we need 10,000 pots oh whoa that's a 
very big order. I don't have metal enough for 10,000 pots. And no worries, we'll provide you with the metal from the Russian government and you take it and you turn the metal into pots. Can you do that? Oh, of course I can do that. That's my job. I just need to get some workers to help me to make 10,000 pots. When do you need it by? I need it by next month. Okay, yes, thank you. It's a big job, but yes, I'll get enough workers and I'll do it. And Moshe was so happy, children, because now he had a huge order. The government was giving him all the metal and he was all he needed to do was hire people to help him turn the metal into pots. The problem was, Marsharian, do you want to help her to maybe go wash her face or something? Um, so um, he started to hire different workers. Oh yeah, I'm a good worker. I always work in the kitchen. I know how to make pots. And he started to hire whoever he could to help him make pots. I did my ace up, but I can't find it. I can't find other puppets. So we'll use my Asaph. You know why? Because the people that Moshe had to hire in a rush, some of them were not very good. They were like, ah, Moshe has all this metal. He's creating pots out of it. But who says how thick the pot needs to be? Right? The pot can have a very thin rim or a much thicker rim, right? You can have like a rim that goes fatter and thicker. He says, no one will ever be able to tell. Hmm, I can steal some of the metal. I'll still, on the outside, the pot looks the same, but it'll just be a thinner pot. Yay! And I'll pocket some of the metal and go sell it in the market. Now, children, because Moshe had so many workers, it got difficult for him to be on top of it. And the workers started to steal a lot of the metal. So at the end of the day, you still got a nice amount of pots. They were still good pots. They still worked well, but he didn't end up using all the money that the Russian government gave him to create the pots because some of it, his workers like stole and took. And so the pots ended up, let's say he gave, they gave him, um, Let's say they gave him, I'm going to use something here. This amount of metal, let's say all this is a big, big, big barrel of metal. They, some of it got stolen, right? A little bit got stolen and the rest was used to make the pots. But if you weighed all these pots against the original metal that was given, yeah. you'd see that there is less metal in the pots than in the barrel of metal that was given to him because some of it was stolen. But Moshe knew there was nothing you could do about it and the pots were still good. And he was grateful. And he said, here you go, Russian government. And they got the pots and the Russian government took the pots. They said, let's try them out. And they said, great, these pots are very good. And they were very happy with them. And the pots worked just as well. And everyone was none the wiser. The problem was that you remember the two brothers, Stefan and Ivan, were very jealous. Ha! Huh? Can't believe the government gave the job to Moshe the Jew. Yeah. Huh? Who says his pots are better than ours? Let's go tell on him to the government. I'm sure not all the metal that was used, was given, was used for the pots. Yeah, but Moshe is very honest. Yeah, but his workers aren't. And I, I, I know that some of it was stolen, so we're going to be able to get him into trouble. Yay! So they went to the government. And they said, government, people, officials, Moshe didn't use all the metal you gave him to create the pots. He stole some of it. Whoa, that is a federal offense. That's a terrible, terrible crime to steal from the government, the Russian government. Well, yes, he did. Yes, he did. He stole. You'll see that his pots weigh less than the amount of metal that you gave him. So, the judge children calls Moshe 
to the court. And poor Moshe has to arrive in the court. And the judge calls Moshe and he says, Moshe, we'll use him as the judge. There has been an accusation against you that you didn't use all the metal that was given to you to create the pots, that you stole some of it. Now, children, Moshe was somewhat aware that the, the pots weren't as thick as they were supposed to be. And so, um, Morris, I'm so sorry. I think kids who are making a noise really needs to go out. I'm so sorry. They just don't want, if you don't, if you don't want to listen, you don't have to be Motek, okay? So, they said, so Moshe, we're going to get you into big trouble and put you in prison. How much metal were you given? And he said, I was given about 10,000 pounds worth. Uh, he says, well, how are we going to figure out if you really used all the metal or you didn't if you stole some of it? Oh, your majesty, I'm a very honest man. I would never want to harm the Russian government. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to collect all the pots again from all the different platoons, from all the different army bases, and bring them back. And we're going to weigh all the metal because at this point already, all the pots were distributed. You have to come back in one month and we're going to judge you. We're going to see. We're going to put all the pots on one side of the scale and the same amount of metal you were supposed to use on the other side of the scale. And we're going to see, do the pots really weigh 10,000 pounds like the amount of metal we gave you? Now Moshe got very worried. And he said, oh no, if they're going to bring back all the pots, they're going to see that it doesn't weigh 10,000 pounds. Not all the metal was used. I'm sure some of my workers stole, but I couldn't stop them. And besides, some metal got lost here and there. I still made very good pots, but what will I do? And he gets very worried. And so he decides he's going to go to his rabbi, the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Lubavitcher rabbi. And he's going to go and he's going to ask him for a bracha. Because in one month's time, he needs to come back again and hear what the judge is saying. And so he travels to the city of Lubavitch where the Tzemach Tzedek was. And he's waiting in the waiting room. And children, there are tens of people all waiting in the waiting room, all wanting to see the Tzemach Tzedek. And Reb Moshe turns to the Jews sitting there and he tells them, how long have you been waiting for the Tzemach Tzedek? Oh dear, a really long time. We don't know if he's going to see us today or in two weeks, three weeks. Yep, sometimes the Tzemach Tzedek goes into his room and he sits and he learns Torah for days and weeks on end and you just need to wait. But at least they give us nice hot drink and food over here while we're waiting. And we have somewhere to sleep while we're waiting. But Moshe said, oh no, that doesn't help me. I can't wait two, three weeks. My court hearing is in two weeks time. I don't know what to do. It's taken me so many weeks to travel to the city of Lubavitch. And I'm so scared that the judge will find me guilty. And I'll be thrown into Siberia or even worse. They're going to execute me. I must see the rabbi now. But the shamash of the Tzemach Tzedek, I'm so sorry. He said, once the Tzemach Tzedek goes to, into seclusion to sit and learn Torah, nobody can disturb him. And we don't know when he's going to come out, either later today or maybe in a month's time. No one is allowed to see him. And so Reb Moshe sits down with the Tehillim and he starts to daven to Hashem. He says, please, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, please, Eibishter, help me. Please save me, Hashem. Only you are the one who can help me. And all of a sudden, running around was the Tzemach Tzedek's little son, the little boy, the Rebbe Maharash. His name was Rebbe Shmuel. He goes up to be the fourth Lubavitcher Rebbe, and he was known to say, Melechatchila Ariba, that if somebody has a problem, 
instead of trying to crawl under it, jump right over your problem. Ask Hashem to help you make every effort to get over it and Hashem will help you get over it. And little Shmuel, who was only seven or eight years old at the time, was walking around and he was very kind to children. He saw people were waiting. He'd go around, he'd bring cups of water and maybe tea, hot tea and food for all the people waiting. And he sees one Jew sitting there and he says to him, Hey, Yankel, how are you? Oh, Baruch Hashem, but I'm really worried. My daughter Sarah's wedding is coming up and I need 2,000 rubles to make her wedding and I have no wedding money to make the wedding. So I've come to your Rebbe, to your father, the Tzemach Tzedek, to get a bracha for Paranasa. Oh, Bezat Hashem, I'm sure Hashem will help you. Please, God, you'll get the 2,000 rubles. Hashem will help and you'll be able to marry off your daughter Sarah with joy and happiness, with all the money you need. And he went to the next person and another one told him, oh, I need a blessing for good health and I need a blessing for finding a wife. And then he comes to Moshe. He says, Moshe, you okay? He says, oh, little Shmuel, I need a blessing. Ah, the courts have caught me and they're accusing me of stealing some of the metal they gave me for making pots for the Russian government. And the truth is that I suspect my workers stole some of the metal. And the truth is that it was so hard to make the pots that some of it got wasted and I had to buy extra tools and stuff. And I didn't end up using all the metal they gave me for making the pots. And now they're collecting all the pots from all the army bases to weigh them. And they're going to see it doesn't really weigh 10,000 pounds. And I'm going to be either sent to <coughs> Siberia or even worse, they might execute me. Please, please, little Shmuel, you go in and out of your father's room, the Tzemach Tzedek. Can you tell him I need a bracha? And little Shmuel said, sure, I go in and out. I'm going in now to give him a cup of water. I'm so happy to see what can be done. And little Shmuel, the Maha, who grows up to be the Rebbe Maharash, goes into his father's room, the Tzemach Tzedek, and goes, he brings his father some water, maybe tea, maybe food, and he comes out and he greets Moshe with a big smile. He says, Moshe, you want to be saved? Of course, please, I'll do anything. Well, do you see Yankel over there? His daughter, Sarah, needs money to get married. You give him 2,000 rubles for making the wedding for his daughter and you'll be okay. No harm will come for you. Oh, is that all I need to do? Is that what your father said? Of course I'll do it. And so, Reb, um, um, what's his name? Reb Moshe goes, he kinds into his pocket. Oh guys, I don't have any of my money, sorry. Mind. He pulls out 2,000 rubles and he gives it to Yankel. He says, Yankel, here you go. This is for your daughter's wedding. Here's two, because Yan Yankel was, Moshe was quite wealthy, remember, right? Darling, comments at the end. If you need something, tell your counselor. I want to name um, um, Moshe's thing. I want to name Moshe um, Yoshi. Yoshi, okay. <laughs> so he says, he says here, and Yankel gets so happy. He says, wow, Baruch Hashem, you're the best. I can't believe that you saved me. You saved me. Reb, Reb Moshe, thank you. Mama, you're wonderful. Oh, Mazel Tov for your daughter's wedding. Oh, I pray now I'll be okay. The Tzemach Tzedek said all I need to do is give money for tzedakah for your daughter's wedding. And I'll be okay. And he comes to the court case, children, two weeks later. And the judge says, take all the parts and put them on the scale. Let's see how much they weigh. And they weigh all the pots. And the governor's, the, the judge's face is looking and he's looking. And he gets very surprised. And he says, Moshe. And he thinks, oh no, here it comes. They weighed the pots and they saw it doesn't weigh the same amount of, as the metal they gave me. And he says, Moshe, you are the 
And he goes, oh no, he's going to say I'm guilty. He's going to say I'm sentenced to, God forbid, execution. And he's stopping saying to him, he says, you are the most amazing, the most wonderful man in Russia. And Moshe looks up, he goes, uh, what? And the judge says, we weighed all the parts. And we realized not only did you use all the metal that we gave you, the 10,000 pounds of metal the government gave you, but you even added to it. It weighed even more. The pots weighed 15,000 pounds, much more than the metal we gave you. That means you put from your own money and your own metal to create the best pots for the Russian government. You are the best. You are getting a huge medal. And children, they made a huge honor. And they created like a whole medal that they gave Moshe. And they put it on him like a big crystal metal, medal, sorry, that he is an honored citizen. That he saved the Russian government so much money that not only did he use all the metal that was given to create pots, but that he made even more metal. He made it way even more. He added from his own. And Moshe doesn't understand. He says, oh my goodness, that was a, such a tremendous miracle. I can't believe it. Must be the Tzemach Tzedek's bracha. I'm going to go thank the Tzemach Tzedek. And so he travels back to the city of Lubavitch children. And he comes to the room. This time the Tzemach Tzedek was seeing visitors. And he comes to the Tzemach Tzedek. And he tells him, Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, your blessing worked. Thank you so, so much. And the Tzemach Tzedek said, what blessing? I don't know what you're talking about. He says, don't you remember I was here two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, and your little son, Reb Shmuel, your little eight-year-old son, he came in and he asked you for a blessing. And you said I should give 2,000 rubles to my friend Yanko for his daughter Sarah's wedding. And I did. And now I was saved. The pots weighed even more than they were supposed to weigh. And the Tzemach Tzedek said, actually, I don't know what you're talking about. I was in such deep learning that my little son, Reb Shmuel, the Reb Maharash, didn't even ask me about you. I just pointed to him to put the water down on the table. And I told him, I can't listen to anything. I'm in deep, deep concentration and learning. So he says, wow, I don't understand. Let's go call little Shmuel. And the Tzemach Tzedek calls his little son, little Shmuel, the Rebbe Maharash. And he tells him, I don't understand. I thought you told me your father gave you, told you to tell me to give money for tzedakah. No, I didn't say my father told me to. I just told you, you should. He says, well, how you're not a Rebbe. You're just a little eight-year-old child. How did you know it would work? And he says, I know. Because every time you do a mitzvah, children, you create an angel. You create a malach. And I knew that when you were going to give 2,000 rubles to Reb Yankel to make the wedding for his daughter, Sarah, you are creating 2,000 angels. And I knew for sure that those 2,000 angels would jump into all the pots that you made. And they would make the pots weigh so much more than they were supposed to weigh. I knew that the mitzvah of giving tzedakah always saves children. It says tzedakah tatzil. Tzedakah saves. Anytime a person needs anything, tzedakah saves and especially children, we learned, especially from the little boy, the Rabbi Maharaj, who was little. And he also taught us that it doesn't make a difference also how much you give. It's a point of giving that when we put others' needs in front of our own needs and we share and we give, Hashem gets so happy. And so children, Rabbi Yankel said, little Shmuel, thank you so, so much. I'm so grateful to you. Your advice of giving tzedakah saved my life. 
said, and Baruch Hashem, your giving tzedakah saved the ankle and helped him to marry off his, his daughter. Children, we are told that the biggest mitzvah, the fastest mitzvah that will bring about, the Geula will bring about Mashiach is the mitzvah of giving tzedakah. So we should always share. Tzedakah doesn't only mean with money, children. One minute, girls. Tzedakah also means with being kind. That means you see your friend, you give her a big smile. You see your friend needs something, you ask her, what can I give you? Your friend, let's say, two, three of you are playing together. Girls, you invite the fourth friend to come join you, right? We make people feel loved, that we're all friends, that we all like to be each other, with each other's company, that we all want to play together, and that we should always be kind to one another and always use kind words.